This tutorial, I'll walk you through every step I used to create this fried egg. Let's go. We'll start off by creating the pan. So press shift A, mash, and add a circle. Press tab to go into edit mode. Press F to fill, and then E to extrude up, and then S and scale it up. And then press X and F to delete the top face. Press A to select all, and then Alt E and extrude faces along normals. And then we'll extrude it in a tiny bit. Then press the icon here in the top or press 3 on your keyboard. And then we'll select this loop here with the alt click or just a double click if you have the... And then press S, Z, 0 to even it out. And then we'll press tab to leave edit mode. We'll go to modifiers, add modifier. We'll add a bevel modifier. We'll change the segments to 4. And then we'll change the amount to 0 0.04. Then press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier. And we'll right click and we'll shade it smooth. There we go. That's our pen. Then press Shift A and we'll add a cylinder for the handle. We'll go into front view by pressing 1 on your numpad or open your view uh, menu and press front. And then we'll press R, Y, 90. 90 to rotate it, press tab to go into edit mode, and then S and scale it down. And then we'll leave edit mode, and then we'll move it to the side. There we go, okay. And I kind of like the look of that. So maybe move it a tiny bit more in position. We'll see it sticks out here at the moment, but we'll fix that later. So select the uh, handle, press tab to go into edit mode, with face select active, like this top face here and then press i to inset like that and then we'll press e to extrude and then press e and right click to confirm and then s to scale it up and then we'll press e again and we'll extrude the handle please and we'll go into edge select by pressing 2 or the icon here and then with Control b we'll bevel it and then we can increase the bevels with our um, scroll wheel. So if we scroll up, we'll add it so it looks nice and smooth. There we go. Go back into front view and I'll maybe fill it all down a tiny bit. There. Now, now we can still see that it um, sticks out. So we'll press set and we'll toggle our x-ray. Press tab to go into edit mode. We'll activate face select. We'll select this face. And then from front view, we can press R and we can just rotate it. And then we can S scale it up so it's still straight like that. And then we'll press Z and we'll deactivate X-ray. And then we'll add a bevel modifier with four segments and maybe the amount to 0 0.02. And then control two, add a subdivision modifier, right click, Fade auto smooth. That looks great. Let's see. I do think I want to increase the size of the handle a tiny bit. So I'll select the handle, go back into edit mode, press A, press S, shift X, and then we'll make it a bit chunkier. And then SX, so we can make it a tiny bit longer as well. And then move it back into position with G and X. Yeah, there. That looks nice. It's S tiny bit less on the x-axis go into front view so I put it back into position there yeah that looks nice and we'll add the egg so select the pan go into face select and select the middle face here press shift s and cursor to selected leave edit mode then press shift a and we'll add a plane press g and z move the plane up a tiny bit press tab to go into edit mode with Control R, add a loop cut there, and add a loop cut there. Press A and S, and we'll scale the egg down. Press, uh, go into top view with 7 on your numpad, or open your view menu and go to top. And then go into vert select by pressing 1, or select it there. And then we'll move it around a tiny bit like this. And make a bit of a fried egg shape. There, I think that's gonna look pretty nice. Leave edit mode, press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier. Now it's a nice round shape. Press tab to go back into edit mode. Press A to select all, E and extrude it up. 
add a horizontal loop cut with Control R, and then we'll move it down. And then we'll increase our render subdivision settings to three. Right click, shade auto smooth. Uh, that looks great. Now we'll uh, add the egg yolk. So press Shift A, mesh, we'll add a UV sphere. Uh, tap the gun to edit mode, scale it down. Um, we'll move it up, go back into edit mode S and scale it down a bit on the set axis as well. There we go, that's a good start. Um, go into front view, press Z and toggle X-ray. And then we're gonna remove the bottom half, X and F. And then maybe we'll remove these as well. We'll remove the vertices, go into edge select and I'll we'll select the surrounding edge of the bottom. And then press F and we'll fill it. We can toggle the X-ray again. And then we'll move it into position and we can see the size of it. Um, looks fairly decent. Um, press Ctrl 2, add a subdivision. And then we'll inset the bottom face. So in edit mode, toggle X-ray. And with the bottom face selected, press I. And then we'll inset it twice so it's nice and rounded. There. And then right click, shade auto smooth. Yeah, I think it looks great. Um, press Shift C to reset your 3D cursor to the center. And then we'll go into front view. We'll press Shift A and we'll add a camera. And then press G and Y and move your camera back. Go into your output settings and we'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. And then now with not zero on your numpad or through your view menu, we can go into camera view. And then with the camera selected, we can use G and Z twice to move it back. And I think that is going to fit perfectly. So now we'll uh, select our objects and then maybe move them down a bit. And then I'm going to select just the pan. And then I want to rotate that a tiny bit on the X axis. So press R and X and then press R and Z. Move it like that. And then with R twice, we can rotate it as well there and then with G we can move it into a better position and we'll just rotate it until we're happy with the rotation of it I think that looks pretty sweet and we'll select our egg press R twice we can rotate that and put that a bit more in position there yeah I think that looks pretty cool so now we'll uh, add a background so press shift A and then in mesh we'll add a plane and then we'll press rx90 and then we'll press g and y and we we'll move it all the way back we'll go back into camera view and then press tab and s and scale it up so it covers your background uh, there we go okay and then we'll uh, start adding our lighting but first we'll go into our render options change the render engine to cycles and then device to GPU compute and we'll change our viewport samples to 128 and our render samples to 512 and we'll go here to color management as well and then we'll change the look to high contrast. Now press set and we'll go into the rendered view and we'll start adding, adding our lights. So press shift A and then go to light and add a area light. Press G and Z and move it up. Press period and change your pivot point to a 3D cursor. And then press RX uh, 30 minus. And then we'll go into area light settings and we'll change the power to 80. And then our shape to disc and then we'll change the size to two. Okay, that looks great. Then we'll press Shift D R Z 120 to make a copy and rotate it. And then press RXX and then we'll rotate it a tiny bit down i think we'll decrease the power to 60 because it's a bit much and then we'll press shift the rz 120 again and then we'll change that power to maybe 40 and then with g and z we can also move them back a tiny bit i think i'm gonna do that with a light the left one as well there that looks good now we'll add a lamp to our background so press period and change your pivot point to median point press shift a and add an area light and then press rx 90 and then g y and move it towards your background 
Then we can change the power to like 200, make it real bright. And we'll change our shape to disc and then the size to three, two. And then we'll go into our camera view. Awesome. There we go. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so let's start adding uh, our materials. Um, select the background, go to your materials tab, add a new material, we'll name it background. And our color is going to be FFC 180. And then we'll select our pen, add a new material. And our color is going to be 646464. And then we'll select the handle and we'll add the same material as for our pan. And then with the handle selected, we'll go into edit mode and then we'll select this loop. We're going to face select, select this loop and then add a new material slot. And then we'll add a new material and we'll assign it. And we can call it metal so we can know which one it is. And then we'll change the color to a tiny bit darker. So maybe DA, DA, DA. And then this metallic on one. There, yeah, that looks great. And then for this handle, select this face here. And then go into select, select more or less. And then there's more. And then with shift R keep increasing your selection there until you have the whole handle then we'll add a new material slot create a new material and assign it then we'll go into our shading tab here and we'll start adding a nice material so if we look here oh, we have a good view okay so what we want to do is add some nodes now so press shift a and s and then search for a texture coordinate and we'll put that there. Then we'll add a mapping node. We'll add a noise texture. And we'll add a musgrave texture. And then last, we'll add a color ramp. There we go. And then we connect the texture according to the mapping, the mapping to the noise, the noise to the musgrave, the musgrave to the color ramp, and then our color ramp to our base color. There, we can already see it's a bit of a wooden pattern. We'll just uh, adjust the scaling a tiny bit. Just play around and see what you like and you can have it however you want. So I'm gonna decrease the noise texture maybe to 1.5. I think that's kinda nice. And play around with the scaling here a bit. So this makes it a bit wider. Maybe leave that at one. And the Z, I can decrease this like that. And then maybe play around with the location a bit. And there we go. I think that looks pretty nice. Um, I'll change the colors of the color ramp. So I'll go to my color ramp here, select the dark color, changing the color to C5A787. And then the right color is going to be changed to 532B28. There, I think that looks kind of nice. It's very light, but it's subtle. Um, I think I'm also going to slightly decrease the roughness of this 2.4. There we go. OK, and then we can go back to our layout tab. We'll go into our camera view and then select the egg whites. And then we can call it egg whites. And we'll just decrease the roughness to 0.2, maybe even 0.1. And then we'll select our yolk. And then we'll call it the egg yolk. And we'll pick out a nice orangey color. Um, I went with E77730. And then we'll decrease our roughness to 0.2. Just like that. Looks great. Okay. Now I just want to change the world, world color, which is going to do a lot for the piece. So if we go here to our world tab and we'll pick the color and then we'll change it to B9958C. There, that looks amazing. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found any part of it unclear or you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you decide to share your artwork on Instagram, don't forget to tag me, I'd love to see your creations. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider supporting the channel by subscribing and liking the video. And remember, practice makes perfect, so go ahead and experiment with the skills you've gained. Thank you for watching and good luck!